Hello everyone, I am Dr. Lahari here and my topic for discussion today would be infection control in radiology. The outcomes would be uh, introduction, uh, general principles on patient care, risk involved during routine uh, dental radiography, infection control measures um, during radiography, the, how the equipment is plastic wrapping is done and disposal of the protection uh, person protective material. So let's just go through the general steps for taking an intraoral radiograph either a film imaging or digital imaging the general steps would generally be the uh, almost common. First of all would be to cover the x-ray machine uh, the tube head control panel dental chair headrest chair arms with cling wrap or also called as the plastic uh, wrap. Wear PPE before entering the x-ray room. Greet and seat the patient upright in the dental chair or in your radiology room chair with the head and neck uh, as well as back well supported. Briefly describe the procedures that are to be performed to the patient because many a times your patient is not familiar with the dental radiology setup or how the procedure is going to be done and hence a small description of what is to be expected ahead is, is just nice. Ask the patient to remove eyeglasses, removable appliances and jewellery that may obscure the area of interest on the image. Lead apron must be used. And this is even more important that the thyroid collar covers the neck of the person completely so that it doesn't uh, come, it doesn't get exposed and is prevented, exposure to that area is prevented. And this is even more important for children. Set the x-ray machine for proper exposure parameters in order to produce highest quality radiographs with least radiation exposure to the patient, keeping in mind the ALARA as low as reasonably achievable principle. Position the x-ray tube to the, at the site to be examined. Next, wash your hands thoroughly and put on examination gloves. Examine the oral cavity in the area to be radiographed before placing the film or the digital sensor in the oral cavity. Insert the film into the film holder or place a protective barrier on the digital sensor and gently position it in the patient's oral cavity. Ask the patient to close his or her mouth and stabilize the film or the sensor in place. Remove the gloves, adjust the vertical and horizontal angulations of the tube head to correspond to the beam guiding instrument. Now, due to this procedure, this step, if you have another colleague who can help you do it, then you can retain your gloves and ask your colleague who is along with you to help you make the adjustment. Caution the patient not to move. Next, make the exposure using the preset exposure parameters while standing behind the protective barrier or at a safe distance from the X-ray beam. Wear the gloves again and remove the film or sensor from the patient's oral cavity. This step of wearing a new pair of gloves could be avoided if you have taken help from another colleague who makes the exposure for you and also helps you set the parameters on the machine. Wash the film under running water, dry it with a paper towel and disinfect it with disinfectant spray. Place the film in an appropriate receptacle. Alternatively, if you're using a sensor, a digital sensor then discard the protective barrier of digital sensor. Ask the patient to be seated in the waiting area and inform him or her about the approximate time required for radiograph to be ready. Disinfect the chair, the lead apron and all surfaces after every patient with a disinfectant solution. Wash hands thoroughly and subject the film to processing or the PSP or the digital sensor to processing. The primary goal of infection control is to prevent cross-contamination. It is important to understand that disease transmission happens from patient to staff, staff to patient and from patient to patient. So to break this chain of infection, it's important to take care of infection control guidelines. During rental radiography, there is considerable amount of risk involved because of the saliva and potential blood contamination of the field that is in question. 
the uh, risk of acquiring infections such as tuberculosis, herpes virus, hepatitis A through E, upper respiratory tract infections, HIV, and when we're talking about upper respiratory tract infections, we're also talking about COVID-19. Hence, it's important that all dental personnel and patients who are in the radiology setup must adhere to the principles of infection control. And it's important that the staff or the dental radiology staff or students who are um, involved uh, take care that uh, patients are protected as well as take protect themselves. Key steps in dental radiology infection control would involve applying standard precautions, wearing gloves during all radiology procedures, disinfect and cover x-ray machine, working surfaces, chairs and the lead apron, sterilize non-disposable instruments, use barrier protected film or sensor or disposable containers to contain these films, prevent contamination of processing equipment. Non-critical items must be disinfected with surface disinfectants. These surfaces can come in contact with saliva or blood or intact skin, but generally not the oral mucous membrane. They include the x-ray machine, control panel, the position indicating device, also called as beam indicating device, chair side computer, dental chair and the headdress, lead apron, including the thyroid collar, surfaces on which the film is placed, panoramic bite blocks, chin rest, cephalometric ear post brackets or forehead support, etc. Barrier protection with plastic wraps is important for all these surfaces and must be changed after every patient. Hospital grade infection of low or intermediate activity which is, can be sprayed and wiped off on surfaces must be used. These generally contain idophores, chlorines, or synthetic phenolic compounds. Semi-critical items must be subjected to sterilization. These come in contact with the oral mucous membrane. Film holders must be subjected to heat sterilization. This is done to remove saliva and debris, especially with hot water and soap. They must be washed before they are pouched in plastic pouches, as shown in the picture here, and subjected to autoclaving. That is the best method of sterilizing um, film holders. Digital sensors must con uh, be <coughs> subjected to plastic barrier sheets. Um, these barriers are generally uh, available from the manufacturer. In case these barriers are not available, then latex finger cots can also be used. That is using your latex gloves and cutting off the size of the finger of a glove and use it as a replacement for a protective barrier, especially in case of CCD or CMOS uh, sensors. In case of contamination, clean the sensor with an intermediate level hospital disinfectant after every patient. When it comes to processing, the <clears throat> film-based processing, manual processors, also called as daylight loaders, there is a risk of contamination of sleeves. Hence, all of these areas must be subjected to disinfection. Films must be disinfected before processing. It's important to wear clean gloves during the entire uh, processing uh, process. Also, digi dis um, the digital film surfaces, the pouches must be disinfected before discarding the plastic barrier pouch and then the digital sensor must be subjected to processing. This holds good for the PSP sensor. In case of the CCDs or CMOS sensor, um, it can the plastic barrier can be discarded and the, automatically the image is processed and visible on the computer for viewing. All personal protective material must be discarded in the yellow clinical waste bin. It's important that the lead foil is disposed of for recycling. This is an um, image taken from the Journal of American College of Radiology. 
and gives an idea about uh, COVID-19 outbreak and what the radiology department should know. For patient care, it's, it was recommended that portable imaging equipment uh, be used to limit transportation of patients. But in case of the dental setting, sometimes this is um, not uh, reasonable and it's not available and you might have to transport your patient to the setting. So um, it's important that all patients wear surgical masks and uh, at all times. Medical staff must be in PPE, which is uh, fluid resistant with eye protection and gloves. And the environment definitely is important to disinfect after every case, which is suspected or potentially suspected of COVID-19. Um, standard precautions must be performed and all surfaces uh, must be d disinfected. Contact ep equipment, um, vendors to find safest disinfectants for each piece of equipment and the one i've shown you earlier surface disinfectant solution is quite useful for all of these uh, surfaces so a robust containment plan minimizes the risk of transmission of the virus to patient and staff and that's something very important to keep in mind so I would like to end by reminding you your five movements of hand hygiene and dental care recommended by WHO. Save lives and clean your hands. Uh, number one is before touching the patient. Uh, number two is before clean or an aseptic procedure. So it's important to clean hands and sanitize. Number three, after fluid uh, body, body fluid exposure risk. And number four is after touching a patient. And number five is after touching patient's surroundings. So it's important that in all of these situations, uh, hand hygiene is maintained. And it is proven that hand hygiene saves lives. Thank you very much.